Hello, for this worked example, uh, we are asked to find the forces acting in members BD, so this top member here, and CE, this bottom member here. Uh, and what we have here is going to be a truss, uh, so it's a bridge spanning about 30 meters. Uh, we've got a 20 degree angle here, uh, and we've got a pin joint over at A, and a roller joint over at F. Uh, so that means that on this end, it's not allowed to move left or right or up and down. Uh, on this end, it's just, it is allowed to move left or right, but it's not allowed to move up or down. Uh, so the first thing we need to do when we're analyzing a problem like this, uh, since we've got specific members, we're looking at the method of sections. Uh, so the method of sections is going to let us uh, basically jump straight to finding these members right here in the, or the forces for these members right here in the middle. So <clears throat> before we do that, though, we need to figure out the reaction forces uh, so the, the forces are supporting this truss at point A and point F. Uh, so to do that, we are going to go ahead and treat the whole body, uh, the whole bridge, as a single rigid body. So the bridge, I'll just draw the outline of the shape there. Uh, we've got a 60 kilonewton force right here. We've got an 80 kilonewton force right here. Uh, and then we've got, like I said, reaction forces on either side. So over on this side, we're going to have, let me call this, um, let's call this the reaction force. So R, F. Uh, and then on the other side, we've got reaction forces in both the X and the Y direction in our pin joint. So R, A, Y, and R, A, X. And these distances right here, uh, it's going to be 10 meters, 10 meters, and 10 meters. So here we can go ahead and we've got our uh, free body diagram set up. Next thing we want to do is solve our equilibrium equations. So we do sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, and sum of moments about, uh, let's say, point A over here. So sum of forces in the X. We've got RAX, and that's it. So RAX, and sum of forces in the X is equal to zero. So simple enough, we've already solved for one of the reaction forces. Sum of forces in the Y. Here we've got RAY. We've got RF. And we've got negative 60 and negative 80. And sum of forces in the y is equal to 0. So here we've got more than one unknown. Uh, we'll come back to sum of forces in the y. Sum of moments, and I'm going to choose point A over here uh, to take my moment about. And I need to just go ahead and take the moments of all the forces about that point. So RAX and RAY don't exert any moment, so acting at that point. Uh, but this 60 kilonewton force is going to be a negative moment, I'm using my right hand rule. Uh, so it's going to be 60 kilonewtons times 10 meters uh, in the negative um, Z direction. Uh, next I've got these, this 80 kilonewton force, so it's going to be 80 kilonewtons times 20 meters is my distance, and that's also going to be a negative moment. And the last thing I have is this RF force. Uh, so the distance there is 30 meters, and my magnitude is RF. Uh, this is a positive moment. So plus RF. times 30. And that whole thing is equal to 0. Alright, so now I can go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and solve my moment equation. So RF is going to be equal to 60 times 10 plus 80 times 20 
all over 30. Uh, and that's going to give me a value of 73.33. 70, <clears throat> the units are going to be kilonewtons. So that is the reaction force right here. That's the magnitude of that reaction force. Uh, now I just need to go back. I'm going to solve uh, for the reaction force on the A side of things. So Ray is going to be equal to uh, 60 plus 80 minus my RF value, 73.33. And so that gives me a final answer of 66.67. So now I've got my reaction forces. Uh, I know that Rax is uh, zero, that basically disappears. And then on either of the two sides, Ray was 66.67 kilonewtons. And Rf, this was 73.33 kilonewtons. So that's the reaction forces acting on my truss. Next part we want to do is we're going to look at the, um, we're going to split this into, uh, split this into sections and examine one of those sections. So we want to find BD and CE, which means we want to cut through those members when we're thinking about how to cut this in two. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is just cut straight down the middle. So. That's my cutting plane, and I also want to check that I'm not cutting any more than three members for a 2D problem. So I've got one, two, three members. Uh, I could be able to solve this uh, with one set of equations, the sum of forces in X, sum of forces in Y, and sum of moments. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of, let's say, the left half uh, over here, this side of my problem. So for that, draw out my diagram. So that's kind of the uh, piece I have left. I've got A, B, C, uh, and I need to draw my reaction forces as well. So the reaction at point A was 66.67 kilonewtons. The load force at point B, this was 60 kilonewtons. Uh, and then I also draw in forces wherever I've cut the members. Uh, so I cut the member, um, this is point D was out here, point E was out here. Uh, so member BD, I cut that member, I'm going to assume tension and I've got the force in member BD. I also have the force in member BE going in the direction of that member and the force in member CE. And the two I'm interested in are this top one and the bottom one. And I might need to find FBE in the process just to get to my final answer. Uh, so, <clears throat> important dimensions uh, this is 10 feet right here. Uh, this is, both of these angles are 20 degrees. Uh, and then, I'm also going to need to define the height of this. And so, if this is 20 degrees, that side is 10 feet. This height right here is going to be 10 times the tangent of 20. That's going to be my height. And that's just a simple triangle. Uh, trigonometric calculation there. Alright, so now I've got all the dimensions in, I've got all the forces. Uh, now I just need to do the equations of equilibrium for my problem. So, start sum of forces in the x, and I've got FBD plus uh, it's going to be cosine 20 of FBE. It's the horizontal component of FBE.
plus FCE. And the sum of all those forces is equal to zero. Next, I've got sum of forces in the Y. That's going to be 66.67. minus 60 for this force here, and then I've got a vertical component for FPE. So minus sine 20 of FPE. All right, finally, sum of moments. So I need to choose my point now, uh, and I'm going to choose point B. So point B has got three forces acting through it, the 60 kilonewton force, FBD and FBE are all acting through point B. So I'm only left with two forces that are going to exert a moment there. So sum of moments about point B. Uh, I'm going to have a negative moment from this force, so 66.67 times 10 feet, and it's a negative moment And then we have a positive moment from FCE. So FCE is the magnitude of the force times my distance. My distance is going to be 10 times the tangent of 20. And all of my other forces, like I said, aren't exerting any moments there. So this is going to be equal to zero. Uh, now I've got my three equations I can solve for my three unknowns. So we'll start with the second equation. Um, I've only got one unknown, FBE, in that equation. Uh, and this is going to simplify down if I kind of rewrite this. FBE is going to be equal to 6.67 divided by the sine of 20. Uh, and that should give me a value of 19.50, uh, the units are going to be kilonewtons. And so since that is a uh, positive force of assumed tension in the beginning, uh, positive forces indicate that I have tension. Next I'm going to go to my moment equation, uh, and I'm going to solve for FCE right here. Uh, so when I do that, I get FCE is going to be equal to uh, 66.67 times 10 divided by 10 times the tangent of 20. Or 10, yeah, 10 times the tangent of 20. And that result uh, will give me a, an answer of 183.16 kilonewtons. And that's also a positive number, so that indicates that I've got a tension force here as well. All right, so I've got FBE, FCE. Uh, the last thing I need to solve for is this force FBD. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go back to my top equation. Uh, and we get FBD is going to be equal to negative cosine 20 times FBE. So negative cosine 20. And my value for FBD is this 19.50 minus FCE. So minus this number I just got here, uh, 183.16. All right, so just simple math here. Uh, and if I solve this out, I should get uh, a value of negative 201.48. And that negative number indicates that my assumption initially was wrong. Uh, so I assume tension, but negative numbers indicate that's actually going to be compression. So here in the end, 
Uh, I've got, I was looking originally for the forces acting on members BD and CE. So here is my solution uh, for the forces acting on BD, uh, and here is my solution for the forces acting on member FCE. So with that, we've solved our problem, we've gotten the answers we're looking for. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.